Yep. Ain't nothing like chugging a cold one, talking to the boys, doing our thing. You know, I can't even spell GME, but I still like the stock. Well, fuck your mother. How we doing? <laughs> How do you spell PCP? All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Uh, real quick, there's going to be timestamps in the description, so that means it should be on the video player too. So you can jump around. If you're here for the GameStop stuff, you can skip to the GameStop stuff. If you're here for the idiocy, you can just watch the whole video. You know, it's really convenient, really easy. So, uh, you know, I love I love when this happens, okay? Somebody, and I want to I wanna pull them up because I appreciate them that much. Hold on. Let's find him. Let's find him. <coughs> this guy right here. Adrian Estrada. Is that Russian? No, we got we to gotta save our accents. Uh, Dad, do we have any beer? Dude, I found the clip. I found the clip. You need a Coors Light in your hand? You're actually right. Dad, do we have any beer? That was that was a great day. That was an amazing day. There was nothing like being in my parents' garage, <laughs> streaming and recording, and doing all that sort of stuff. I was there temporarily while I was getting my my apartment situated, and uh, it was probably like a week or two I was there, and that was really really nice. It's very nostalgic. Uh, a couple of the comments from last video. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, first off, by the way. Got like 60 or 70 new subscribers, and I don't know if that's people returning <laughs> since the hiatus or if I offended you at some point, probably multiple times in the recent past. Um, but it really means a lot, and we actually got a ton of comments and a lot more uh, reception than I expected. And I, it really means a lot. It really means a lot. So yeah, it's going to go through a couple. We're going to sort by the uh, the top. And uh, if you want if you want to say something or somethings, you know, and you want to get some recognition for it, leave a comment down there. You know, do the thing. Just go ahead. Just fucking type your mind away. And go fuck your mother. Rest in peace, Lou. Um, welcome back, Astro. Starting to feel like 2021 slash 2022 again. Appreciate that. All the nostalgia. Funny, I randomly thought, where the hell did that dude Astro go? It's actually that guy, Astro. Thank you. He's back. Welcome back. Fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. I love you guys. Astro's back. Welcome back, old friend. Now let's bring back... Me back to 2021. The lean back, the double forehead wipe. Sai, that's our boy. <sighs> You're goddamn right. <coughs> Astro is back. Live streams back in the day were epic. Yes, they were, and they they will be great again shortly. This, I'm not. I really. I just. Let me read this later. Holy shit, it's alive. Appreciate the respect for my pronouns. Uh, thanks for the upload, man. Good to see you back. Great to see you. You look happy. Good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've missed you, Sam. Glad you're doing well. Who said I was doing well? Fuck you. Came back to us. Got to crank some GNR. Professor Astro, did you hang that clock up yet? No. Uh, I wish I had your smarts when I was 25. I was out making poor life choices instead. Catching up now, I'm wiser and most definitely older. Good to see you back with some bullishness on the exciting last few weeks. I have some moon tickets, but didn't have the balls to lock in any profits on the last run up. Three years. These fucks made me wait, so I think we deserve more zeros. Uh, yes and no? Uh, no Moaz. I'm sorry. That's just, no. You've heard me talk about this shit enough. And if you follow me on Twitter, you would have gotten the even more blunt uh, opinions from me. This thing's going to squeeze more, I think. Uh, and how much it's going to, we'll figure that out as we go. Pump and come. Yes. Yes. I can't wait to have six Arnolds back in the Discord when we go live. Shouting that. It's going to be great. And evidently, I developed an Arnold accent, like, on the spot. So, it'll be seven, including me. Moaz confirmed? Unfortunately not. But definitely some squeezy stuff. Um, and then... Uh, shout out Shivries. I don't see you here, unfortunately. Shivries was one of the OGs way back in the day who... <laughs> who would literally buy me lunch, because I was still in between jobs of going, like, full-time with YouTube. So, anywho. Cheers to that. <coughs> Let's get to it. All right. Uh, so we're going to go over GME first, and then we'll talk about the rest of the market. So today was very boring, slightly eventful, but nothing uh, particularly exciting unless you're a bear. And we have to respect bears. Bears are not terrible people, most of them anyways. 
uh, and, and bears are ultimately the ones that, uh, you know, they push the price up. <coughs> Anywho, uh, with that aside, uh, we did uh, see some, some, you know, attempts. And today felt more like accumulation. And if you're not familiar with what that means, if, if your job for a living, if your job for a living, Jesus fucking Christ, can I be even more fucking stupid? Uh, regardless of what you do for a living is you buy things and sell things to make money. Ideally, you buy low and you sell high, right? And if you're a short seller or you think particular things are overvalued, then you sell high and you buy low, right? how markets work well if that's how markets work then this is what we're watching right now so the the whole entire structure of today was primarily this kind of shape and if we if we make this disappear that's a pretty good shape to be in uh, because basically we started where we opened and kind of closed where we started albeit this closed down uh four and a half percent so not quite out of the woods just yet but we actually did turn green on the day like 30 minutes before close it was wild um, but this structure typically is accumulative. And what that means is, through the Wyckoff lens of market philosophy, that somebody is buying this at its low to then sell it at its high, right? So if they're buying low, we're assuming they're selling high, which means the price is, in theory, going to go up with that model. And I say model very loosely. It's more it's more of a philosophy, kind of like if you believe in the boogeyman or not. Anywho, uh, the low today was at about $20 flat, which I think was a level that I talked about yesterday. In yesterday's video? I could be wrong. Uh, $20 is huge though, and we bounced off of it. There was a lot of volume that kicked in. So this this is a great sign, right? That means that there's still a lot of active buyers. If we look at the institutional activity for today, that level was actually the highest level in terms of institutional orders. <clears throat> orders. <coughs> I'm even more bullish, right? Today was very somber, and I think that this is the, the final uh, piece of, of purchasing or accumulating uh, going into tomorrow, where I think we'll see a lot of gappy action. Um, that's not to say this thing won't ever go lower again or that it won't go even higher. But uh, for this current campaign, we'll call it, this is, I think, we're exiting the, the accumulation phase and entering into markup. So selling what they have been accumulating. And it's also worth noting that um, uh, NVIDIA earnings are tomorrow. And if you don't really follow like the rest of the market that much, that's okay. NVIDIA has been, at least for me and, and my portfolio management, has been a form of barometer for market mania, market uh, sentiment. So if NVIDIA is going up, then typically the rest of the market's going to go up. And if it, NVIDIA starts to go down, typically the rest of the market goes down. Uh, obviously, it's part of the MAG7, uh, the Magnificent 7, if you're not familiar. Um, so... <coughs> It, it's not explicit. It's not just uh, Nvidia that could be doing that, uh, but <coughs> do have effects where Nvidia can be uh, <coughs> one of those things moving up, and the rest of the market sees that and then tags along. We'll we'll discuss more of that because I don't I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole. That'll be its own video. But just for context, their earnings are tomorrow, and they're trading at all time highs. I think as we speak, uh, near. Actually, wait. Yeah, the all-time high was 973. It's trading at 953. So that is uh, something. We do see some bullish volume kicking in. I think I'm bullish on NVIDIA, even though it's too... Uh, I, don't get me started. That's another video in of itself. Um, I think NVIDIA beats. And even if they don't beat, it's going to go up. So I'll, I'll, I'll make that my verdict. I think it's going to go up. I don't know about the earnings themselves, but I think NVIDIA goes up either way. And the market goes with it. So what made GameStop's run this time around different was it no longer followed the S&P, right? Or the NASDAQ or the Dow Jones. It became a thing where regardless of what the overall market was doing, GameStop kept going up. And that this time around was extremely unique. And typically things that are actually getting squeezy and are going to commit to a move upward if they are resisting the market coming down and they continue to go up or they trade sideways instead of dropping with the market, uh, that means that there's a, a buyer or 10 that are behaving agnostically to what the rest of the market's doing, which typically implies some urgency. So that typically means a buyer is different. I'm telling it's different. <laughs> Something's different this time. So if we see things sell off tomorrow and GME maintains its, its stagger, we're good. We're 100% good. If it sells off with it, I'm going to be a little concerned, but that's okay. This $20 bounce is is more than enough for me to feel a lot of confidence. This entire range, and for those who, who the fractal stuff, again, that's another video of its own. Don't get me started. 
uh, this structure is very similar to what we had just outlined over here from today. And that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. We're not going any further with that. So I do think we see a gap fill at some point all the way back up to 30 and we'll see all of the, the continuation kick in and then actually 29. That was the level. Jump to 29, slight rejection, and then take back off, break through 30. All right, uh, dark pool stuff for today. Uh, biggest level was at 2036. And the second one after that was 2193, which I think was the high going into the close. No, no, it was not. So that's that's really good. That's really good that we're seeing a lot of activity there. We're just below this range, so it could be a mix of buying and selling. I mean, all these levels technically are a mix, but again, without getting into it, <laughs> fuck me. Um, I think that there's a lot of buyers there. And uh, we're gonna be testing this little range between 2193 and 2148. We're literally sitting in the middle of that right now at 2173, but I think, I think we're gonna see ourselves break through that uh, very shortly. The uh, gamma is negative, and uh, that again is an entirely different subject, but negative gamma, means that market makers will uh, buy the rips and sell the dips. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of overnight action. I'll explain at some point why there's a new model I'm coming up with. And uh, a lot of, if not all of the crazy movements on GameStop and meme stocks have been overnight hours. You see gamma intensify going into the close. And then the overnight market is typically very illiquid. And when market makers hedge for the price going up, uh, if you want a video about this in particular, tell me in the comments and I'll do it. Like and subscribe or else, by the way. When market makers are uh, short gamma, they buy the rips, they sell the dips. So if the thing starts to move up, market makers buy with that to hedge. If the thing's moving down, then they're delevering on the way down. Uh, this has negative gamma all the way up to 23, $23. So this should be enough to send us up and away out of 23 and into that 24 to 25 range. And then I think we'll see like squeeze action uh, from shorts take place after that. Um, today's biggest dark pool orders, uh, 4.17 million at the 2193 uh, level, 2162 for one and a half mil, 2145 for one and a half mil, 2127 for one and a half mil, and then finally 2036 for 2.3 mil, not too shabby. Um, some call selling today, uh, but still predominantly call buying. And we actually saw that kick in towards the end of the day. Let me see if I can. Yeah, we saw uh, some put selling taking place. Puts floated kind of along its own uh, its own level. It, it wasn't too far up, too far down. Primarily was going down. Puts were primarily being sold today. Um, and then calls were being sold. And that, I think, is where you saw a lot of the downward pressure come from. But I know that we saw a lot of, uh, in the last 30 minutes, we saw a bunch of uh, crazy call orders coming in. So we're going we're gonna to keep tabs on that. I think overnight, we're going to see uh, some activity related to those calls. Um, no splash trades as of today. Last one was at 9.41 a.m. EST on the 14th. Um, and uh, yeah, we actually, we saw some uh, call sweeps coming in quite a bit. Um, I have to double check what side of those they were on, but I think those were purchased. It's looking good. It's looking good. It's looking real good. I'm liking it. Uh, the biggest flow is on the $20 call for June 21st, which is actually a chain that we've been seeing a lot of activity on. I'm going to build something uh, tonight for the site where I can highlight the whole option chain and, and show you where the activity is taking place at. It's going to be really cool, right? It's going to be really fucking cool. And I'm excited to do it because I get to really like mend the the two worlds of mine of OnlyFlows and YouTube. And, and I'm excited for it. Really excited for it. Bear with us. About, about an hour after market close, we start doing all of our big like data aggregating and reporting. So the site will slow down a little bit. We're in the middle of actually upgrading servers again. So bear with us with that. Here's our, here's our gamma, all right? So we're in negative territory. This is uh, taking all of the chains, I think. I'm primarily worried about the weekly and the, the one ahead of it. So the current and the, the next weeks. But in general, uh, we do have uh, a lot of gamma that we're, we're looking at. Um, let's see, I think this is the right one. Yeah, so today, primarily the $25 call was being bought up like crazy. Um, and the 30, $35 put looks like was being purchased, which is deep in the money. We'll talk about those at another time. Again, because that's a whole different world, we're not gonna go there. Um, primarily call buying though, 
And uh, the $15 call, 15 being bought, 17 being sold, which is interesting. Um, on the week, we've got a lot of call purchasing at 25. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, we saw the 15 and the 17s being sold overall on the week, but a lot of selling on the $32 put. And this, this is looking bullish, dare I say. We've gotten it right a lot more than we've gotten it wrong over the past six months. So fuck you. Let's see if we got any, uh, any trade signals actually for GME today. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That $21 call and $20 call getting hit like crazy. Yeah. 11 K in premium, 11 K, 14 K, 30 K, 24 K. So nothing, nothing absurd, but we did see some sweeps on the June 21st. Okay. This looks good. This looks good. It's a little, little tame on the premium side, but that's okay. That's okay. I think we'll, I think we'll see it kick in a lot more going into tomorrow. Let's see if there's anything else I want to show off. Oh, market dash. So we're going to segue into the overall market. Actually, right before that, the levels I would be looking out for, by the way, on Jimbo. Going to be 2190 and 2304 and 2432 and 2116. This is what I'm looking at. And I wouldn't be surprised to see either this. I wouldn't be surprised to see this or something like that. Uh, still a chance for downside. I, I think we're kind of past that, though. So we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, still have a gap to fill down to 1738, but that... I'm not too concerned about it. I don't think that's very feasible. Unless there's some news that brings this thing down. I don't know. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm looking at. And if you guys want any other things covered, please leave a comment and let me know. We'll get to that. Um, overall, though, today in the market, um, not a whole lot uh, of crazy stuff. We see these VIX $15 puts. I think those were being sold. I have to double check that. No, they were purchased. They were purchased. Somebody's shorting, shorting the VIX. Um, the uh, bearish opening positions are down to a seven day low and so are the call positions. So of course with Nvidia earnings coming up, the market's just basically gonna ping pong back and forth. So I'm not expecting too much, uh, especially over the past couple of days and even the end of last week because everybody's eyeballing those earnings. Um, we will keep an eye on this though. Uh, uh, bullish sweeps are on an uptick and so are bearish uh, sweeps. Um, I like seeing the bullish ones above the bearish, though. Um, and in general, uh, we have kind of, eh. yeah, very low, very low opening positions for 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 bears and bulls throughout the whole market. Um, and then this is the the purchased call sweep premium versus purchased put sweep premium, and the the put, put, put <laughs> the put purchased sweep premium for puts. I'm going to, I can't say that in a video game. Uh, those are on the rise. And uh, uh, so are the, uh, <laughs> the call premiums. Yeah, we're like 23 minutes into this bitch. Okay. Yeah, we're going to wrap it soon. Um, call premiums way above put premiums. Though, so that's, a, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Again, all of it has to do, has to do with NVIDIA earnings, though. Um, dark pools at uh, a local all-time high as far as activity goes. So that's interesting. Somebody's moving some stuff around. Uh, today, Tesla was the highest dark pool uh, activity, uh, with, followed by JD, uh, PSNY, uh, QQQ, uh, Intel. That's uh, that's interesting. Looks like tech is seeing some some form of rotation taking place, either being bought into or being sold out of. Uh, we will find out shortly. Uh, today's most splash trades: uh, SPB, AIRC, OSG, CNH, PRM, FLRN, Zeta, A10. Yeah, we'll we'll actually come back and somebody got the fucking symbol RSI. No fucking way. No way. That's hilarious. Um, We'll add a segment where we go back from the previous day's splash trades and review uh, if there were any changes, like if any significant things happened after we called them out. Because that's typically what happens. I love splash trades. They're, they're so fucking cool. Um, looks like TSM had a... Ooh. See, this is telling me they're going to beat. This is telling me NVIDIA is going to beat. $22 million of the 110 call on TSM. Where is my trading view? Yeah, deep in the money. That's interesting. Uh, that was today. And then Google calls for the 140, $16 million. Yeah, a lot of tech, a lot of tech calls coming in. I think NVIDIA is going to beat. That's just, that's, that's wild. 
um, unusual uh, bullish flow, unusual bearish flow for those that want to pause and look at that. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. We're going to leave it there. This has been good. This has been fun. I'm excited to be doing this again. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. If you want to join OnlyFlows, go to onlyflows.app slash register. Slash register. I'm, I'm over it, dude. I'm so tired. I want to go to bed. OnlyFlows.app slash register and uh, get your account today. Uh, it's, it's priced pretty cheap and it won't be for long. So uh, get in while it's hot. Or I'll find you.